Well, hello and uh, welcome to Wednesday. And uh, also welcome to April. Yeah, it's officially no longer March. I know uh, for a lot of us that felt like a felt like a very long month. And uh, I'll go ahead and admit that very briefly yesterday, uh, there was a moment there where I kind of forgot that March 31st was a was an actual day. Um, if you've ever watched Parks and Rec, there's an episode where April uh, doesn't realize that March 31st is an actual day on the calendar, and it very briefly felt a little like that. But uh, no, we are officially in April now. Uh, so welcome to April. Uh, it is cord cutting today, and my name's Philip Palermo. Now, if you're new to the show, this is a chance for us to go over some of the biggest stories in cord cutting and streaming. And as always, thank you for tuning in. And if you are new to the channel, uh, all the stories we're going to discuss today, they'll be included down below in the uh, video description. Uh, you'll see links there to check those stories out over at cordcuttersnews.com. And while you're here, uh, feel free to click like and subscribe to join an awesome uh, gr and growing community here. Uh, with that being said, it's time to dive into the news. And we're leading off today with uh, some pretty big Roku news. Uh, the company announced that Roku OS 9.3 uh, is coming. It's the latest iteration of the operating system that powers a whole assortment of uh, Roku devices. This uh, latest update improves voice search, uh, adds new customization options, and better overall performance, among other things. Uh, Jess has a, a detailed post over at corecuttersnews.com where she lists out the, uh, the announced features, and there are some pretty nice improvements mentioned. Uh, we have things like faster boot times for when you're first starting up, or quicker out, uh, app loading for certain channels. In addition, the Roku mobile app should get, should get its own upgrade, uh, including a new navigation bar up top. Uh, now, Roku says the OS 9.3 update should start rolling out to users over the next few weeks. So if you're a Roku user out there, keep an eye out for that update. And uh, once you do upgrade, feel free to let us know what you think. Uh, are you taking advantage of the new search options? Do you notice any performance improvements? Um, are there things that you would love to see Roku improve in the future? We'd love to hear from you. Next up, uh, we have some good news for F Chicago Bulls fans, actually. Uh, ESPN announced it's moving up the uh, docuseries The Last Dance. Moving forward, instead of a June premiere, we're going to start seeing the series air on April 19th. Now, if you haven't heard, The, the Last Dance chronicles the uh, Chicago Bulls season uh, from 1997 to 98. Uh, that was Michael Jordan's last year as a Bull, and it was the year they completed what's known as the second three-peat. Uh, sorry if that spoils it for you, but the uh, series consists of 10 episodes, and ESPN is aiming to air two new episodes every Sunday from April 19th through to May 17th. And, of course, this comes as good news to uh, basketball fans who've been longing for some content now that the NBA season is on hold due to, due to the uh, coronavirus outbreak. And, of course, we've been following a lot of the different ways that uh, ESPN and other sports broadcasters have kind of adapted uh, to the current reality where there really aren't any live sports to, to cover and analyze. Uh, we've seen broadcasters turn to esports competitions, uh, like with Fox and its e-NASCAR coverage. Uh, meanwhile, ESPN has started airing sports-themed movies from the, uh, the Disney Vault, their parent company, Disney. Uh, so a multi-part series following one of the most notable teams in NBA history. That should be of great interest. And we're looking forward to checking it out later this month. But, of course, uh, not everyone's a Chicago Bulls fan. That's fine. Uh, so if there's a team out there that you would personally love to see a documentary on, you know, who would it be? Uh, also, are there any previous sports documentaries that you really love and you go back to time and again? Let us know in the comments. And speaking of ESPN and basketball, actually, the broadcaster also announced that it will start airing a players-only tournament featuring current NBA stars like Kevin Durant and uh, Trey Young. It's called the NBA 2K20 Player Tournament and features 16 pro players all competing in NBA 2K20 from uh, 2K Sports. Uh, now, this uh, tournament begins this Friday on April 3rd 
at 7 Eastern on ESPN. And then later that evening, the coverage shifts over to uh, ESPN2 at 8.30 Eastern. The, uh, the series is set to last until April 11th when the uh, semifinal and finals games will be tele televised, although ESPN hasn't released exact times for those later games just yet. Now, of course, all of these players are, you know, they're professional athletes and they're naturally competitive, but it, they'll also be playing for $100,000, which the uh, winner can then give to the charity of their choice in, uh, in helping with uh, coronavirus efforts. And uh, just like the NASCAR series I mentioned earlier, it's going to be interesting to see how the uh, skills and personalities of, the, of these pros uh, translates onto the virtual courts. Uh, I imagine a lot of trash talking. Just a guess. And again, all that starts on Friday, April 3rd, with a pre-game pre show uh, starting at 7 Eastern. And you can find more details in the link we've included down below in the uh, video description. In TV uh, hardware news, uh, Reuters, and yes, that is how you pronounce it, trust me, uh, is reporting that Samsung Display is aiming to end LCD production by the end of the year. Now, Samsung Display, that's a unit under, go figure, Samsung. And it's already closed one LCD production line back in October. And this announcement today looks like a move in response to the, uh, the falling demand for uh, traditional LCD displays. On the higher-end TV front, we have tech like OLED, which uh, Samsung rival LG has been uh, champion sh championing for years. And very recently, we have companies like Sony and Vizio that have announced their own OLED models. And Samsung itself is investing quite heavily in its own quantum dot tech, which is based on traditional LCDs, but used as very tiny mole molecules of very specific sizes to generate colors. And it's not just TVs that are starting to move away from this uh, older LCD technology. Uh, Samsung also supplies smartphone displays, and some of those higher-end models are also making the move to other display options, like the OLED screens in Apple's iPhone 11 Pro. Although, yes, some of Apple's lower-cost phones still do rely on uh, LCD technology, like their baseline iPhone 11 and the 10R or the XR or 10R. But, of course, none of this means that uh, LED panels are going anywhere overnight. Uh, in fact, you can still find great deals on LCD panels of very good quality. And I think you're going to do that. You're going to be able to do that for a long time to come. So while it's interesting uh, to see that different display techniques are gaining in popularity, uh, good old LCD will still be around for a while still. We also have a post uh, walking you through the various ways to enjoy streaming content in relative peace and quiet. Of course, uh, with so many of us staying home right now and turning to streaming content for entertainment, there's, you know, there's bound to be ways or bound to be times when you'd rather watch a movie or a show without uh, annoying your significant other or your roommate. And so we put together a quick guide for some of the more popular streaming devices out there. And we walk you through connecting either wireless or wired headphones, depending on what your device supports. The how-to focuses mainly on Fire TV, Apple TV, Roku, and the NVIDIA Shield line. And while Bluetooth is a popular choice for connecting audio gear, the setup on some of these devices can vary a little bit. So we get into that. Uh, plus, there are also options to let you connect traditional headphones uh, with the standard 3.5 millimeter jack. I know like the Roku remote lets you uh, uh, plug in traditional headphones. So feel free to check it out. As always, it's linked down below in the video description. And lastly, like we said, it's a new month and that makes it a great time to look ahead to see what's available and what's new on various streaming services. So over the past few days, we've published a number of posts on what's coming up and what to watch. Uh, we've got a listing of new shows and movies coming from Disney+, Plus, including movies like National Treasure and classic TV shows, and some new Disney Plus exclusives and originals. Uh, we also have a roundup of new movies uh, available to stream for free on Tubi. This month, they're adding films like The Big Short, Blood Diamond, Shrek Forever After, and uh, Total Recall. Meanwhile, Stars is adding a number of movies in April, including Zombieland Double Tap, uh, Napoleon Dynamite, Spider-Man, no, not that one, 
No, not that one. I'm talking about the uh, 2002 Spider-Man. That one is coming to stars this month, as is its sequel. Actually, now that I think about it, Spider-Man Far From Home is also coming to stars at the, uh, this month, so that makes at least two Spider-Man sequels to keep you busy. As you can imagine, it's a uh, pretty extensive list, so you should definitely check out the full post. We have links to the uh, roundups I just mentioned down in the video description, but also, you know, keep an eye on CourtsCuttersNews.com as we have several posts showcasing what's new on various services this month. But for now, we've reached the end of the first cord cutting today for April. Uh, as always, we thank you for watching and supporting the channel. We definitely appreciate it, and we'd appreciate it also if you'd uh, click the like and subscribe buttons are down here somewhere. And you can also click the bell icon, and what that does is it notifies you whenever we post new content to this channel. Uh, for now, though, we hope you have a wonderful rest of the month. Happy April. Please be safe. Uh, my name is Philip Palermo, and until tomorrow, take care.